Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another video. This time we'll be doing something different. I have posted over, I believe, like 400 videos on this channel, and this is going to be my first ever and probably one of my only non-Yu-Gi-Oh! related videos, kind of, because the person that did the comic, which as you can tell by the title, is what I will be reviewing, the first chapter in this video, is none other than Kazuki Takahashi, and if you are unfamiliar with who Kazuki Takahashi is, I'd be very surprised. I'm surprised you're watching or subscribed to a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel and you do not know who Kazuki Takahashi is. He is the creator, the mangekin of the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! He stopped doing the Yu-Gi-Oh! series after Duel Monsters from a manga perspective, but I believe he still had influence on GX, uh, on 5Ds and Zexal. So I think Arc 5 was actually the only Yu-Gi-Oh! show that he did not have some sort of influence on. I might be wrong about that, but obviously his influence on Yu-Gi-Oh! has kind of decreased. He's kind of stepped away from it after Duel Monsters ended, but he worked on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters manga and anime series from 96 all the way until 2004, and since 2004, Kazuki Takahashi has not done much. He published a one-shot manga named Drump back in 2013, which was like a game that you could play. Uh, this is not, this is his first non-one-shot manga, I believe, since Yu-Gi-Oh! Since Yu-Gi-Oh! ended in 2004, and it is called The Comic, and the premise really intrigued me, and I went out and I bought, I subscribed to a year copy of uh, Shonen Jump by Viz Media. I will link it down below in case you want to check it out. You can pay 99 cents for just one issue in case you want to check out the series, in case you want to read the first chapter, but yeah, I was very intrigued about this. Uh, the story, the comic, is about a rookie manga creator's manuscript and the secret it possesses. Similar to the story is about a young boy's millennium puzzle and the secret it possesses. All, right, all kidding aside, I mean, you can see the, the parallels there, but all kidding aside, uh, it was a very, very interesting story, and I hope a few of you have gone and read it. Now, if it was not Kazuki Takahashi, I probably would not have checked it out, but figured I gotta give the guy at least a ch I mean, you know, he is solely responsible when you think who created Yu-Gi-Oh!, who is the reason Yu-Gi-Oh! existed, the first name that should pop into everyone's head is Kazuki Takahashi. He is the Yu-Gi-Oh! god. Uh, we have to just thank him for Yu-Gi-Oh! being what it is, and so... Yes, thank you, Kazuki Takahashi, and he was the reason that I wanted to read this manga chapter and read this story, and honestly, I really, really enjoyed it, and hopefully some of you have checked it out and will leave your thoughts down below. So the story is basically a murder mystery story, uh, and I think there's actually a very early Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 reference. Now, maybe it's just because, again, this is <laughs> the same guy who made Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, and maybe it has nothing to do with Arc 5, but... Ryota Sakamaki is the main protagonist, and he is a Mangekin. He is a struggling Mangekin who is having his story, Pendulum of Love, published in Shoujo Jump, which is a very popular manga magazine. I'm sure it is a spin on the word Shonen Jump, so that's kind of cool there. Uh, and Ryota, again, writing the story, Pendulum of Love, and you can see the very first panel, the girl in his story is saying, my love swings like a pendulum, which is very similar to, you know, Yuya Sakaki in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Maybe it's not an Arc 5 reference, it probably isn't, but it's still a, a really, if it is a reference, it, it's a really cool reference there, a really cool little Easter egg. And so, Ryota gets someone to draw the backgrounds. Uh, his assistant gets an editor who he has not met yet to draw the backgrounds, and he kind of inquires on who the editor is, and his assistant gets a little, you know, uh, you don't have to really worry about him. He's, you know, I only hire the best people, but he's not really giving any details as to who this person who's drawing the backgrounds is. So that's already a little suspicious. And then we see Ryota on the phone with his sister, Mihana, his younger sister, who is kind of teasing him about, you know, all the, the goopy love stuff that he's drawing in his manga. And, and then we see a character who I feel is going to be the main antagonist of this. I believe this is the murderer. Now, maybe that is probably way too quick to judge and way too quick to say, but we see the most popular mangekin in the world, and that is Saya Himakawa. And he is doing a live stream, and he has the most popular uh, manga in Shoujo Jump. He is just beloved by everyone. Even Ryota's sister, Mihana, seems to have a bit of a fangirl crush on him. And Mihana says to Ryota, because they're still on the phone while the live stream is happening, oh, I wonder what he thinks of your work. And Ryota's like, no, don't ask him, don't ask him. But Mihana writes to the comments and says, what do you think about Pendulum of Love? It's the same story. It, it, the story is posted in the same magazine as you in Shoujo Jump. And so Saya reads the comment and says, and the stream is being viewed, by the way, by half 
a million people, reads that comment. Out of all the comments, of course, he <laughs> reads that one. And he says, oh, it's the 16th most popular manga story in the magazine. And then he kind of laughs at it. And he's a bit of a dick. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, this manga, I think it's going to be canceled very soon. And then he notices something. He notices something and he gets very visibly freaked out. And he immediately ends the live stream. He's like, oh, maybe it's because the manga was so bad, but I have to end the live stream. So really kind of a, a, a D-bag guy. And it's funny because Ryota was very non-offended by it. Like if someone, especially in today's age where it's very hard to take criticism, especially douchey criticism like that, like that's not constructive criticism that Saya, he was literally just ripping Ryota's manga. But Ryota, he was like, yeah, you know, that guy didn't really hold back, did he? And Mihana actually got upset probably because she's, again, some, like, 12-year-old fangirl, and she's like, you know, you have to make better work, and she hangs up the phone. I actually felt bad for Ryota. I'm like, geez, what kind of supportive sister is that? But again, she's probably, you know, a, a very young and, again, fangirly kind of person, so it, it fits the whole theme there, but I thought that was kind of funny. And so Saya then says to a detective, or actually, we don't know if it's the detective, but he says to someone, investigate this Ryota Sakamaki guy. So clearly he saw something that he did not like, uh, we don't know why, we don't know what connection he has, but we learn what this is, and Ryota then runs into a guy at the laundromat that turns out to be a detective, the same detective that made the arrest in what's known as the Halloween murder. Three years ago, a 22-year-old girl was murdered on Halloween, someone put a pumpkin on her head, uh, like a pumpkin mask, like a Halloween outfit, and then threw her off a balcony, threw her off an overlook, and she died. And her body was found with this weird marking, or there was a weird marking at the scene of the crime. And that marking was the same marking that was in one of Ryota's backgrounds. And so when that happened, I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, wow, that's actually really, really good. Because again, we don't know who this editor is. We don't know who's drawing the backgrounds of this. And clearly, Saya has some sort of connection to the victim, maybe some sort of connection to the murder, that he immediately took notice to this and probably thought that Ryota was maybe involved in the murder or... I, I don't know. I shouldn't say I think Saya is the murderer, but he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe it's just because he was an a-hole. Uh, so Ryota gets back to his apartment, and his there's a pumpkin voodoo doll with nails in it, and all of his chapter work is gone. He looks out the window, and there's a motorcyclist that took off, and most likely that's the guy that broke into his apartment, left this really strange, creepy uh, pumpkin, again, with nails in it, voodoo doll, it looks like, and all of Ryota's chapter work is gone. So, Ryota does some research. He realizes that the mysterious symbol left at the scene of the crime is the same one in his backgrounds. He talks to his assistant, and he arranges to meet with Baba, who was murdered, uh, who was not murdered, who was found guilty of the murder. He's 23 years old, uh, and he gets a 15-minute meeting with Baba, who also is, in fact, the guy from his jail cell that is doing the backgrounds. So great job by the assistant to outsource to a prison cell to get someone to do the background. Probably didn't even have to pay Baba. It sounds like typical cold throat business as usual. Uh, and so Ryota meets with Baba, and Baba's not saying anything. Baba looks kind of sad and just out of it, and Ryota tells Baba that he thinks Baba is innocent because of a certain flower that Baba drew on the symbol, and that flower means hope. And so Baba begins crying, but he can't say anything because he's mute. So Baba is unable to speak, and the final line of this, ma of this chapter is, this is the story of a manga artist, his imprisoned assistant, and how they bring about an unbelievable miracle. So that is clearly the theme of this entire story, and honestly, I really, really loved it. I thought it was genius to have the guy who's clearly innocent, Baba, I think it's safe to say, is innocent and was framed, and whoever framed him knew that he was mute, knew that Baba was unable to speak, and so you frame a guy who can't defend himself, it's genius. They found all these markers and markings at, at his house at the and that were matched what was at the scene of the crime, that's why Baba was arrested and charged, and the poor kid can't defend himself, and so he's going to have to communicate with Ryota through Ryota's manga, through making the backgrounds for his manga about what actually happened, and there's going to have to be an unbelievable miracle that will bring the true perpetrator that killed this 22-year-old girl to justice. I think it's a fascinating premise. I'm actually really, really excited for chapter two. I was on the edge of my seat really the entire second half of this chapter when you learned what this story was going to be about, and I really, really enjoyed it. So Kazuki Takahashi is, I think, a really, really great writer. 
uh, and I really loved it. And again, one of my favorite things about the original Yu-Gi-Oh was when it was just different games. When I mean, I love the card game, don't get me wrong, but Yu-Gi-Oh was really enjoyable back in Season Zero before you know, Duelist Kingdom, when there were multiple, a bunch of different games being played, and the storyline wasn't focused around the card game, and problems could be solved through Yami games, not through just the dueling and through card games that we're used to now. Not that I think that's an issue or anything. I mean, obviously, I still love the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, but Kazuki Takashi did a masterful job before Yu-Gi-Oh! was a card game to write a compelling story, and I think he's doing a great job in this story, in the comic. So, I'm definitely going to keep reading it. I probably will not do monthly reviews. I believe this will be a monthly segment. The first chapter came out October 15th on Monday, uh, but I'll probably review the whole thing when the manga is done. I'm not sure how many chapters it's going to have, unless this video gets a lot of comments from you guys and you guys tell me that you really want me to continue reviewing this story then I probably again will only be doing this review and a review when everything is said and done but we'll see I mean I make content for you guys most importantly so if you guys want to see me do this every month every time a chapter is released I absolutely will but yeah you guys let me know what you think of the comic let me know if you plan to continue reading it let me know any predictions and theories you have regarding it and so yeah really huge thank you again to Kazuki Takahashi for all the work he's done in Yu-Gi-Oh and I wish him the best going forward with this project thank you everyone for watching. I cannot wait to hear all of your thoughts on the comic down below in the comment section. Special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, and James Rose, and to my Diamond Tier Patron, Bouldergeist, and to my Egyptian God Tier Patrons, Sincloud, and Odd Eyes Vaughn. Huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Would not be able to do this without you guys, and would not be able to do this without you guys that just watch my videos, because again, without all of you, I would not be here. I will talk to you down below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.